So what's up, Matt? Thanks a minute for coming on. No, that's great. Great to be on. I've heard many of your uh, many of the shows over the so lockdown period. Certainly in my runs, it's um, been some good ones, definitely. Okay. But it certainly, yeah, uh, helped me sort of reminisce Taekwondo days, definitely. Yeah, I've had a few people say that, all right, that uh, looking back, especially like if you're talking about tournaments that other people have been at as well, they can kind of relate to what you're talking about. I think it's kind of... Oh, yeah. But uh, like you were saying just there, like uh, you haven't um, done Taekwondo in a while, is there, is there any uh, major miss it? Is there, would you plan on coming back to Taekwondo or are you going to stick with maybe my toy? Yeah, no, I'd love to. I think um, I'm 37 years old now, Jamie, so I think I'm a bit past it. So... And I, I finished my last um, last competition was winning the 2015 Euros, so um, I felt that that was a good time to to uh, retire at the top kind of thing. You know, it took me well, I was competing internationally since 2005, and the Euros always eluded me. So it took me ten years to um, to win it. So um, I thought. It was uh, the right time to, to finish, definitely. It's a nice kind of round thing, isn't it? Yeah, like the, the 10 years, but win it on the 10th year and, and leave it there. Like that's good. There's something nice about them kind of round, kind of round, just kind of numbers, I think, isn't it? Like the 10 year. Yeah, there. definitely. I am, um, because I, I competed in the world, uh, I think it was sort of June, July time, just before, and um, and it didn't go well. Um, yeah, I, I lost to um, Poland in sort of the early, earliest rounds. Um, although I, I felt like I'd, I'd sort of done enough to win, I, you know, you, you have to make it clear. So, and at, at that point, um, I thought it was a, I'd had enough. Then, you know, I'd lost a bit of confidence after that. Um, but unfortunately, uh, uh, my coach, uh, I'm his master now, but uh, Philip Lear, he um, he, he persuaded me to to give it one more go, along with the likes of Neil Ernest, because they they were involved in the England team at the time, and they could see like the, the good thing we had in the team, and so um, luckily I, I listened to them, and and yeah, and managed managed to win it. It was a good good one to end on. Yeah. Yeah, I think I remember that fight up against the Polish guy, Rafal, I think, was it? Was it Rafali's name? I yeah, him, I think it was. I yeah. him the final of 57. He was, he's, he, he's tricky. Like, he was, a, he was a tricky fighter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Very tricky. Yeah. Often, often the case with these Polish, they're so okay. good. You know, I've fought so many over the years, and they've always been hard fights. Yeah, yeah, like the, they're always strong. Like even like they never have a time where they're not strong. Like even, but when you think somebody's gone, like they're just somebody just as good comes in and replaces them. <laughs> yeah, the the pool they have of competitors and it's just amazing. Definitely, it's just yeah, it'd be great. It'd be amazing if we had that here. It'd be so good. Yeah, we're kind of the same. It's like it's ups and downs. Like 2017, we were, we have us like we had our best team. Like we're all our best competitors that we could have put on, or put out. And since it's kind of dropped off, and like it's it's maybe starting to pick up. Like but it just you, like you have those ups and downs of Poland. It's like they're just consistently no, they have top fighters who are going to pick up medals. Yeah, yeah. But even looking at Ireland now, it, it seems like you've got some great youth coming through, and um, yeah. It's, the team always seems strong, whatever year it is. But uh, that 2017 was a special year, wasn't it? It was an awesome team. That was one year you won as well. Yeah, so, I won, yeah, I won in 2017. Yeah, and then number one country win on, on home soil. That was it. Felt a lot better than I thought it would at the time. Like before the tournament, I didn't think it'd make much of a difference, but uh, it, it definitely did. Right. Did it put any? Um, did it give any uh, added pressure on you? No, I didn't think so. Because like that before, I kind of thought like, ah, uh, this could be. It. I kind of felt like. I felt like no. My kind of thinking was that nobody 
if you win a world championships, no matter where you win it, like no, you don't get like an extra world title for winning it at home. Like nobody goes like, oh, he was a world champion, oh, yeah, but, but he won it in Ireland. Or, you know, like, nobody says that like, oh, but he won it in this place. It's like you're just a yeah. world champion, like you know, it doesn't. It, but but when you do win it at home, it definitely does have an extra feeling. Like, but that's what leading up to it, I didn't think like it was like, I sure if I don't win this one, I'll just go to the next one. And if I don't yeah. win that one, I'll go to it. that that was kind of my thinking. It's like. It, it doesn't matter where you win it. If you win a world title, you're still a world champion. It doesn't matter, but oh, definitely yeah. winning at home. Winning at yeah, home. Just, sort of a, a nice, that, that memory, doesn't it? You hold it dear to you to win it in, in the country you're from and family and friends there. It's, um, yeah, it just, just adds to it, I suppose. It's massive achievement in itself, but have, have, to have them there as well is, is, is good. Did you have now, that um, in 2015? No, nah, not, not really, because um, it was up in Scotland, so um, not not quite home. Well, that was close, it wasn't yeah. quite home. So, um, so yeah, I didn't have family or friends there, and I didn't really feel any sort of added, added pressure. It was just it made it easier, really, because it was we didn't have a have to. Well, we flew there, but it was like a quick flight. So, and we know we knew sort of what we were going into and and so yeah so it's just it made it helped really in fact you know yeah definitely I thought nearly the same in Scotland was that like it nearly felt like we didn't go to a tournament because like the flight was so short and then just where the hotel was and where the arena was it was like you didn't really like what you saw was very limited for us like you never really got it it was like it was like we could have been in Dublin that was kind of how I felt you know you yeah, didn't, yeah, yeah. You didn't see yeah. anything to tell you that it wasn't Dublin because you just saw a hotel and arena and there was a Nando's kind of next to the uh, hotel. So it was like, you kind of saw very little like. So it could have been yeah. it could have been Dublin in Scotland. The mistake having that Nando's is right by us. Oh dear. I remember um, after the way and going to Nando's and just, I was in such pain after. A too much and just, wasn't wasn't smart about it. Too yeah. much water and too much too much food is a a good combination. Certainly, certainly learn a lesson after that. Especially if you get the extra spicy. Oh no! <laughs> no thanks. thanks. <laughs> yeah. But like, just to take it all back, like, how did you actually? How did you get started in taekwondo? Like, what was your what was your background? What made you start? So yeah, I was about. Well, Taekwondo was about 12, but I got into martial arts um, at eight. Yeah, I was eight. Um, just at that age, I suppose your parents sort of throw you in and try different sports. And, and but I was quite into football and, and I was playing for a team, but I was, I was always sort of on the substitute bench and not, um, not really getting a game. So I lost a bit of interest. And um, I think my mum saw an advert in the newspaper they're a local, um, it's called Korean, Korean Karate, so, so very, very close, very similar. And the, the um, instructor's background was Taekwondo, but just sort of got into Korean Karate. And um, so, so, yeah, I did that for about four years um, with my dad. So we both started, so it's it quite nice to be able to do something together. And, um, and then he, he um, ended the class sort of... Um, lost his way a bit with it and um, and so we he suggested that we go and train in Taekwondo with um, a good friend of his um, called Andy, Andy Delaney and um, to train there for about um, 10 years or so and, um, and then just sort of it came to a point where um, he was a great instructor but I just needed to, to move on to, to challenge myself. Hello. Yep, you're okay, there. Uh, for a minute. But yeah, I'll just say and say, um, so I was training with a guy called Andrew Delaney and um, who was great, taught me, well, and still how important basics were, are. Um, and, um, but, as I was saying, yeah, I was kind of in sort of my comfort zone and wasn't really being pushed by other, um, uh, well, other 
uh, students there. So um, I started to look elsewhere. Um, we, uh, oh well, I went to train with Master Dennis, Master uh, Jamie Hogan, um, and then um, we, we also went to uh, Polish camps, the Slovakia camp, um, and they just opened my eyes up to the level and how far away I was from it, really. Um, so yeah, and then I, I got involved with the England team at about, I reckon probably 2004, seems ages ago now. But, um, and and I, again, I saw the level there and I was a long way from it. And um, I remember the first year I didn't make the team or, um, and so it came, kind of gave me incentive to, well, to improve and get better. And, and yeah, that was it really. So the story goes from there. Yeah. But even then, like, would you have always been competitive as a colour belt? Was competition something you always did? Yeah. I was, um, yeah, with, with my first instructor, he, he took me everywhere, anywhere possible, um, may, mostly across the UK. But at that time, there, was, there always seemed to be a lot of competitions on the go in Scotland, Newcastle, down south. It was, it, it was quite a, a good time. And we always competed in other organizations competitions as well so just opened up more competitions to us yeah and I think you, you have to do that anyway whether it's taekwondo or, or now wacko and um yeah it's important yeah i remember even when i was a color belt like you there was the way more tournaments or at least it felt like there was way more tournaments but like every couple of weeks you were going to a you were going to something and um, whereas now it's like over here we have kind of the four big or sorry the three big competitions in the year and then isn't the whole lot you have to kind of look like maybe sometimes you have to go outside the kind of the main art like the ita like the main organization you have to go to some other like other organizations to to pick up tournaments yeah, yeah. And i don't really know what that is because i like that like i think like lots of like competing often i think is is necessary like especially when you're at a young age and you're trying to develop and you just get used to stepping on the mats and competing Definitely. Even with some organisations where the level wasn't quite the same, no disrespect, but um, yeah, when the level wasn't quite the same, you, you still get that um, that ring time and the experience of trying different things out on the mat, which is, is so important. Well, you can't always risk trying them at, at the, the bigger competitions. Um, yeah, that's the thing, like, yeah. Yeah, you still get something out of it, even like, like you said, the competitions, you mightn't be the same standards, you definitely still get something out of them. Oh, good, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Would you have always been a, would you have always been a fighter? Or would you have had a time where you did patterns as well? Or would it been any success? Any success yeah. Patterns? yeah, I was always made to sort of do all, all, all the disciplines, really. Not, not made to, but I want, wanted to, just because it was Taekwondo, you know, especially as a, as a junior, as a kid. But, um, it, you know, it's, um, it was great to do everything. But as I got older I, I realized my passion was was for sparring and um and so seeing the level uh, i realized that i had to to focus purely purely on that really and uh, being my passion it, it, it made it a lot easier you know yeah but would you have been successful like would you have won would you have won many tournaments as a color belt or like any younger days like or were yeah you just... well i did i did actually i remember winning um a ukta um black belt competition as well and I got a uh, uh, you know all round competitor award um, so so yeah so I, I did do a few and I think um, I was in the, done a bit of team as well um, in England team we did the European Cup and we got we medaled in, in that so uh, somehow I was, hide, I was hiding at the back so you can really be seen but um, but yeah we also did this this um, a competition where it was open to every organ. Well, each organisation had to put a team of, of black belt, five black belts in, and we would do. Uh, you'd have to do your, your your team pattern, your um, breaking power, and then your sparring. I think it was, um, it was at the O2 or or just uh, one of the arenas next to it, and um, 
and that was brilliant. Again, I was um, I was forced to do, do the team pattern, but we sort of made it through. And, and I think we lost to TATV in the finals. But yeah, can't quite agree with that. Zach got disqualified for knocking one of their, their guys out, and um, so did Stuart Arroyo. Arroyo so um, yeah, I don't quite think it was a knockout, but um, they played on it a bit. But anyway, it's all part of the game. No, not a full contact sport anyway, is it? So. Yeah. But look, when Zach is coming at you, like he's a big guy. <laughs> I had that week in, week out. And, and um, oh, it used to be uh, painful training sessions, definitely. I'd imagine so, like, because uh, he definitely... I always thought that was a, a one with Zach, like, he, he, a sound guy outside the ring, like, but then you saw some. he was a completely different person when it, the match started. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, um, just so uh, trying to get out of those axe, out of the way of those axe kicks, just it's mental, just just sort of just hovers and he just places it where he wants, you know. You know, just, he's um, so fit as well, for and he just looks so relaxed. Yeah, that's it, like isn't it? Yeah, just so chilled, like it doesn't look. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just a death boom. Yeah, just keep just that cute and keep going. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just comes forward, comes forward. Yeah. So, like when you first started up with the when you first sort of started up with the England team, um, would you have been junior or were you kind of into seniors straight away? No, I was I was straight into senior. I didn't um, get my black belt until I was I think it was eighteen. So um, so yeah, I, I then went straight into to seniors, um, and then I. It, uh, with my black belt I sort of did a lot of local sort of competitions um, and then went into trialling for the England team Yeah did, did you feel like the, you kind of maybe missed out because like not having a junior career it can be hard yeah. to step up and be successful as a senior if you haven't had a couple of years of junior behind you Oh most certainly yeah it, um, that's why it was like playing catch up you saw all these England boys that who had a junior career, and um, and it just made me realise how far behind I was. Um, it just having that that competition experience is is massive. Yeah, so, yeah, I did feel like I missed missed out on that, but I suppose it's all part of the journey, isn't it? You know, it's yeah, like that, JT. Maybe the, the the fact is you kind of felt like you had to play catch up. Maybe made you work even twice as hard. So then, like you know, you you got there in the end. Like then, absolutely, yeah. It did make me a lot more hungrier and determined. Yeah, but like going into like obviously Canada in two thousand seven, were you kind of expecting to win there, or was that kind of a no, this wasn't no, not at all. Well, because I I wasn't even meant to go to be honest. Um, I so my first so my first competition was Germany 2005 and I made the team because in fact I don't think there was another minus 71 at, at the time it was minus 71 so um, so I went as a 71 fighter and um, the first round I come, come up against Sweden and he was like 6 foot he was 6 foot 4 just really tall and I wasn't a 70, 71 fighter either and I went out first round um, and it made me realise that that wasn't the way I should be fighting out. So then next next year I I um, competed at 63 and um, and at the time there was it was a strong division but I I managed to get to Romania in the Euros 2005. And then um, I come up against, um, I think it was Florian, Florian, the Romanian, who, who won it in the end. Um, and so, so, but I could see I, I was, you know, I was getting closer and it was a close fight between us. So anyhow, the following year, um, 2007. So Felix Kelly, I don't know if you you know yeah. Felix. 
Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, he was brilliant. So yeah, in Romania, he won, he got, he won, I think, um, and he won sparring. He won the, um, he, I think he won, he got three or four medals from it anyway. So then he turned, turned senior and he was so good. Um, and so we fought for the position. It, it, again, it was close, but he won. And um, so he went to the Euros, I think it was in Slovakia or somewhere, and he won, he won the Euros. Um, he was just so good, just great hands, because he, he was um, a, a, well, he got a boxer as well, and that's what he went into our, our type one day um, to focus on. But um, so yeah, so it, it was he won the Euros, and it looked like he was going to to the Worlds as well. And I think he he just sort of turned eighteen, and um, but he was still in the final year of of college or whatever it may have been then. And um, so he can go. So and it opened up the position to me. Um, I think me and Stuart had to fight for it. Um, Stuart Ryan. And so anyway, I won that and then went out to, to Wales and up. I, I don't think anyone expected me to win it. I was, I was certainly the underdog. No, it, it took my advantage really because I'd not had that much experience on the international scene. And, um, and so no one really knew, knew me and, and my style. So, so yeah, no, I, I don't think it, even the coaches, I think I, I probably surprised. Yeah. It's kind of mad how it comes around like that, though, isn't it? Like a woman, you go from not maybe not even going to top step of the podium. It just yeah, yeah. Sometimes things just click into place that it just all works itself yeah. out. Yeah, I am. Um, I believe. I believe there definitely. I mean, you have to if you, to to win. But um, I, at the time, I I been training with um, a guy called Sofa Rahman, and he's a good, good friend of mine. And um, so he was a junior, he was just, I think he was like 17, 18, and he was junior. And so me and him trained six days a week with, with his dad, Habib. Um, and although he's, he, he didn't really have any experience in Taekwondo, he, he'd, um, he'd been with Soifa the, the whole way through his journey in Taekwondo. And so, he studied it, watched videos, you know, and analysed certain vices. And so we trained with him. He would hold the pads, put the, the body shield on as well. And then, and we would just train six days a week, sparring, sparring drills. And, you know, I think one session, I, I, I knocked Soifer out. We just, we trained hard, but um, it, it, it was good, good training, you know. And, and he went on to win um, the Worlds. He, he was just on fire, just brilliant. And he'd come up against uh, Julio Carlos in the yeah. final, finally. And um, yeah, yeah, great final. I think that went to um, an extra round and, and he won it. Um, and so, and then I went on to win the senior division and just showed you that, that what we were doing, our training that we were doing was, was right and effective. And it, and it was, you know, it was, um, and to see Soifer when it gave, gave me the confidence that I could do it as well. So, yeah, no, it, was, it was good. It was a really good feeling for both of us to win it. It would have been, yeah, it would have been hard if he'd won it and I, I'd not, or the other way around. Definitely. Yeah. Again, like that, it works itself out. Would, would you say that was the hardest, like at that point in time, would that have been the hardest you would have trained was leading up to that tournament? Yeah. Just um, yeah, we we used different approaches and uh, we were smart about it as well. You know, we, we we did watch a lot of film and and talked about different combinations and counter attacks and drawing opponents in and just different strategies really. And that I've not really not really done done much work on before. You know, or not really thought it as as um, sort of deeply as, as we did yeah but then like there was 
I suppose you kind of you said already there was kind of some gaps, I suppose, between when you won like stuff like to 20, 2007 to 2013. Like, why do you think there was maybe that big a gap, yeah. I suppose, between when you managed to get back on the top step of the podium? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I um, so after 2007, I, I didn't um, compete in another Worlds until 2013. I was just a bit, a bit unfortunate with back injury. Um, our group training that I had with Soifa and his dad sort of um, ended. He, he moved away um, with university and, and so um, I, I didn't have an instructor. I didn't have a, a full-time instructor until I met Darren Anderson. Um, and I, I regressed a little bit. I think I, I put myself under a bit of pressure being world champion. I am... I, um, I, I let it affect my um, my performances men- mentally, um, so I had to work on that as well. Um, and then, in, yeah, when I um, came to me and Darren, um, we formed a um, a club. Well, he formed a club, but it, I was quite heavily involved with the rest of the team, which included Zach Espy. Um, um, Shane later on from Ireland, who I'm sure you know well. Yeah, he's um, from my club. We start like that. Like he's <laughs> so we tra- we trying to get in the same club. Like when we would have been, well, he would have been a good bit older. But uh, yeah, we're actually from the the same club. <laughs> I realised for you. Uh, no, uh, my, my, my mugs are right. <laughs> it's a really good guy. Good, good to train with. Ah, yeah, song guy. Uh, I always see yeah, that one's always takes a few minutes because he was always mug around the, around the club and then like when he went over there it was Shane so then anytime you hear Shane it kind of it takes a, it takes a second to kind of click up who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah likewise with that here mug. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, no, he, we, yeah, we all worked so well together and we all put in our own ideas to Darren as well. He his um, background is um, a strength conditioning. Um, and uh, sports performance so he yeah he always listened to to us and um, and it worked really well you know Zach won a lot of a lot of competitions during that time although he was always winning so it didn't really matter but um, but yeah no it was a good good team so it's kind of the same sort of thing I had with with uh, Sofa and Habib a little bit um, and I would do, we would do a lot of one to one with Darren, um, pad drills, and, and yeah, and the strategy and fitness because he was a strength conditioning coach. He would write us these programs, and they're just men- mental, just so, so tough. Cause I, it was 2015, I don't think I've ever been that fit. It just, yeah, it works really hard. Yeah. But, um, and going back to 2013, uh, um, yeah, I did regress a bit. And then um, I recall uh, Julia Cross said to me after I won the the, uh, the Worlds in Canada, she said to me, you know, now it gets even harder to win it. You know, you've got to show you can win it again to prove it, it wasn't a fluke. And that, that, that was always on my mind, I think. That consistency, which is, as a sports person, or in any sport, it, it's the hardest. It's one of the hardest things is to remain consistent and, and injury free, which was was my problem. I had a, a few back injuries, which made me miss the the worlds in between that. I think two thousand nine and eleven, which is disappointing because because uh, Leek won. A, I think two thousand nine was it. Two thousand nine. So yeah. that was it. been great to have been involved in that competition. Definitely. Yeah, I always kind of felt that you and Luke are kind of very similar styles. Was um, in the in yeah, kind of a so. yeah, like because I remember twenty ten was my first time um, been at a European Championships, and it was kind of Eddie said to me, it was like, oh, that guy there, Matt from England, there, like he he's good, like he's won the worlds, like he he fights very like, and he even said it, he fights very like Luke Woods. <laughs> it was uh, that's how he kind of described your style to me at the time. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, Luke's also like he's so strong as well. I just remember him just having hard side kicks and um, and uh, strong hands. And I, I remember fighting him. Uh, also, Phil Lear, he did a uh, like a fight night, and um, so some of um, the Irish team came over, and I fought Luke in, in on that night. And I remember he, he split. Um, Split my eye open, and it's yeah, good little scar there. I remember, I remember Luke for that. Definitely. Well, yeah, I, think he, I think he won the two. Did he win the two thousand and ten Euros? No, he Those came. Days. He came second. He lost to Brian Van der Westerlaken in the final. That's who I lost to. In the, is, yeah. Yeah. Just all. Another, another tricky fighter. I fought. I fought him in. We were at a Dutch Open. I fought him in in team. And uh, it was one of the hardest matches I've ever had. It was only two minutes, but still, that's what I was thinking. And like, obviously, there's a size difference in that. But still, I was thinking like, this guy is uh, he was so he was just so smart. Like that's why I kind of felt it's like this guy is. Uh, I felt like yeah, he was nearly yeah. always a step ahead in the fight. That's kind of how I felt like I was always. He was just so tough. And he had such long limbs as well. He was tall for a sixty-three fighter. Yeah. Just had big legs and long arms, and so. Yeah, make makes it even harder, yeah. especially for a you know a lightweight a light fighter. Yeah, I think he was up at seventy even at that time. I was still at I was fifty seven, and he was right. um he was going up to seventy. So there was even a bigger difference than maybe there would have been earlier on in his uh, his time. But uh, yeah. no, it was good. It was good. To, it was good to step in the ring with him. Like it was good to have uh, to have that match. But uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, a tough That's what it's all about, isn't it? I used to love the team. Yeah, that's it. Like they give you those those chances to step in with some other people, and I suppose the fact it is only the two minutes, it goes, it, it does go quick. Yeah, it does, and um, you know, likewise for yourself. I was normally, I was certainly the well, certainly the smallest fighter in our team, and so, um, so yeah, you just got nothing to lose, and um, just sort of like uh, give it your all, don't you? Really, just just want to get out there and fight. Fighter and, and beat him. Yeah, like the because I was always the smallest, and we had like a, a lot of good bigger guys, like around seventy kilos, seventy eight. It was it was hard. Like yeah. I wasn't get, I wasn't doing too much on the team. Um, but last year I managed to get on the team toy, and like I didn't really miss it because I never really like expected to be on the team being a smaller guy. But then last year, like, I kind of got that taste for it. Like it's like there's a good buzz off the team. Is like oh, I want to do this more often. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's exactly that. It's such a good buzz, and then the sort of the teamship, the camaraderie within mm-hmm. it. It's just um, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. So, um, so you think you'll be more involved with the team? Is it a more experienced competitor for Ireland? Hopefully, that's like I think. I think I definitely bring that. Um, like that. Uh, like I'm a big enough fifty-seven. I suppose. Like I'm kind of. I could be sixty-three. Um. So like by the time the team comes around, I probably am sixty three. So yeah, like, exactly. So yeah, definitely I've a lot of experience. I know a lot of the guys. Like, so that's it. Like I'd like I'd like to be involved in the team. Hope if the coaches keep letting me. Yeah, definitely. To have someone with your movement as well is is a nightmare for any bigger fighter. You know, it's um, yeah, I think so. Like just going back then to like twenty thirteen, like you said, going into two thousand seven, that. Uh, you kind of felt like not a lot of people would have known you, did you and like you were, I suppose, did you think you kind of had the same thing in 2013 that not a lot of people were kind of maybe taking much notice uh, of what you're doing? Like I know Julio maybe going into that tournament was like, uh, it would have been, I suppose, the favourite even, not just going into, like going into the tournament and then as well maybe going into the final. Like, yeah, because he, he was, uh, he won the 2011, didn't he? So he, he was defending world champion. So, um, yeah, maybe I, I may, maybe people might have forgotten who, who I was, forgotten about me. But on, on my side of the fight, I did have a lot of European fighters, and I I'd, um, I hadn't missed the Euros, just the world. So um, and I fought and um, so I fought Kazakhstan in the first round. It was a tough fight. And then I fought. I think it was um, Finland. Um, again, another another tough fight, 
And then um, the latter stages, they come up against uh, Norway. Um, Orvind, Orvind? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, it's me at mine, but I don't even kind of pronounce his name, can I? <laughs> um, but yeah, so and he uh, he just come off the back of losing in the European finals against Sunel, and so and he's he's a really good fighter. So that that was a tough fight, and we knew each other fairly well. And um, yeah, fortunately, I, I managed to win that. Um, and then I come up against Sanel, who was um, yeah defending European champion at the time, and um, and so that was a tough fight. I think it went into he he beat me in a previous competition before, um, so I I owed him one definitely, and um, and so I think that went into an extra extra round, um, and again yeah I won that, but it's such a hot. I don't know if you remember it, but it was. The stadium was so hot. It, oh, just remember sweating buckets. And then after after that round, after the semi final, I I, um, I was grabbed by the the doping the doping guys and I had to go go and have a um, a, drug, a drug test. Um, so that was quite a, a new experience for me, and I was shattered. Like I yeah yeah. You couldn't have waited after the final. Sorry, mate. I couldn't have waited till after the final, like. I know exactly, and I was um, I didn't have, I'd sweated everything out. I didn't have any sort of um, anything to to pass water, so that they were waiting for a little little while. <laughs> really, yeah. A, yeah, after it's the awesome. wars in Ireland, after the wars in Ireland, after I won, and it was nearly all the guys like it was. I got tested. Adam was tested. Ryan was tested. There was a couple. Uh, I think uh, Sebastian, what the guy who won plus eighty five was tested. Uh, there was one of the girls like right after you we won it's just like this guy's coming over and you're going like oh yeah this I'm with the doping I'm with the anti-doping and so you end up in this room like you've just won the world and that's kind of how you spend the next the first half hour is like inside the doping room but it was kind of cool as well though because you had all those people who had just won as well so it was like it was kind of like this exclusive kind of club I suppose nearly you know that you got into but, but definitely not how you, I would have expected to spend the first 30 minutes after winning the world championships inside and um Inside the dolphin, inside the dolphin room. You like to say a special club, definitely. Yeah, but um, when Julio was on, like he kind of said, he kind of found the mats that he fought. Maybe this is how he feels about the match, but he said the mats were different to on the center stage to what he fought on on the rest of the the rest of the day. Did you feel like? Did you feel that there, the mats were any uh, a problem? I, I heard I heard that a little bit, um. I they were a little bit a little bit slippery, but they didn't affect my game, I don't think. You know, yeah. I, I mean it's different for Julio because yeah, that's he was he's all about movement, you know, more so than I was, but and I was just trying to track him and, and keep it simple. So so yeah, that that may have been a disadvantage to him, but we're both on the same ring, you know. Yeah, definitely. And um, like I think, like you said already, like you and Luke Woods kind of had a very similar style, and Luke had pushed him very close in the semi final. So yeah, like, maybe yeah. I'm surprised that a similar style later on, then you happen like Luke just missed out, and then but you managed to just nick ahead. Like so, maybe it was the style more so than anything else. I, I think at the time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I- See the Luke Woods was the fight after, and yeah, it was really close, really good fight as well. So that's a shame in a way. I would have been great to have fought Luke in the final. So. Yeah, but the thing about Luke, even at that tournament, was and this is where I was kind of even shocked with how he did it against Julio. Was he was only just back from he was back training taekwondo about four months. He was in Australia for a couple of years, came back and yeah. went to go to the worlds, and he was. He went to, because there was no 70 spots. It's like, right, well, I'll go 63. And I remember the first squad session that he was at, it was like he was not at the races at all. Like, even when I spoke to him a couple of times, I felt like, Jesus, this is not the Luke Woods I would have expected from before. And yeah, yeah. He just he just turned it around like, and like that to, like, to get a bronze. And 
I suppose after being world champion, that was a bit of a letdown for him. Like, but to push someone like Julio after like basically back training full time four months was was crazy. It was, it was so much achievement, yeah. like you know. It's, yeah, you know. I, I remember, I remember the time because yeah, I remember him being away for a long time, and yeah, it was a surprise to see him in this, you know, in this semi-finals. Like, but then uh, knowing how good Luke is, it, it wasn't at the same time. Isn't yeah, it's yeah, that, that was yeah. yeah, but um, uh, and, but for me though, for, to to it it really justified that to me to win to win the Euro uh, the world, sorry, and to win that one sort of really justified that I am good enough, you know, and and it's always the the mental side is always a hard part of it, and so that was kind of what what I was battling against at times, you know, and to have the confidence to believe that. Um, and having beaten like the, the vice European champion, the European champion, and then the world champion, it, it, it really made it, it, it special. And someone of Julio's stature and, and the level he's at, it was um, yeah, yeah, really good. And I have to thank, I have to thank, um, well, my coach, Feel here for that. He just, um, particularly at the, the beginning when I fought Kazakhstan, and he he gave me a bit of a bollocking because I just wasn't at that level, and it, and um, sort of, opened, you know, made me. Yeah, well, like even then going into the final, did you have did. Was there a specific kind of game plan that you would have came with for for Julio, or were you kind of mostly just thinking about just do what you do well, or? Um, bit of both, really. Bit of both. Um, it's just to be smart and keep it simple and and track him really. Don't track him into the you know corner, corner him off, um, and, and wait for the for my opportunity and and be be strong with side kicks and 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 hands and and turning kicks, which were, were quite effective. I found. Yeah. which yeah I don't yeah you know that, that that's that's what worked for me definitely and then sort of the last the last part of the second round it sort of changed to my to my advantage and and Julio had had to come and and, and fight you know yeah and I think it. the last sort of 10 seconds I, I caught with a a back kick, uh, sorry, side kick going backwards, and and that really won it for me. Yeah, I remember the fight. It was it was a cl- it was a close match. Definitely, it was a very close one. Um, but even like that, I think yeah. like you said, it's, it's a great one to win. Like to beat the reigning world champion in the final is kind of that's the way you'd want to do it. Yeah, that, absolutely. Yeah, if you if you're gonna win it, that that would be the way. That, um, and someone someone like him. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it it might not have been the greatest of fights, but um, but yeah, it was certainly a, a bit tactical. Yeah, but like then as well, like you said, winning like winning the world championships and then repeating it, like that kind of lets you know that you were at the level. Does it, would win it would add in the European title kind of add to that as well as like you kind of have you have one you have both then you have a world title you have a European title. Yeah, yeah, that that's. That certainly, um, yeah, was a, the you know cream of the the the, the icing the icing of the cake for me really is to win was to win the Euros because it it been every year I just because Euros yeah they were every year and they every time it just eluded me and I and I'd be so frustrated and so disappointed and. Seeing someone else on the the the, um, the podium, hearing someone else's national anthem, it, it it probably gave me that extra determination to 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 get it in the end. Definitely. Yeah, I thought like I don't think I suppose that the, the top guys I suppose have nearly all won world and European sport. Like I think like I know in Ireland with people who won European titles, with people who won world titles, but there isn't as many who have won. Both, 
And I imagine it's the same in England. I imagine it's kind of the same in a lot of countries is the people who have won world titles and European titles, like there, there isn't a whole lot, I don't think. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a hard, funny, isn't it? it? In a way, it doesn't it doesn't quite make sense to win a world championships and and not Europeans. Or well, certainly, it did for me. I, you know, I just can understand how how it took me so long. But the, the level's so high that every competition is different and and um, comes with different challenges. Yeah. How did you find in Scotland fighting somebody from from England in the final? How how did you find that fighting Ruben? Yeah, that that was quite tough because you know he, he's good friend, so you never you never want to um, fight a friend in the certainly in the final as well. And, and secondly, um, we we trained so much together during the squads over the years that we both knew each other so well. And fortunately, I. Um, I, I had competed against Ruben in a lot of local or, um, or regional competitions and I'd always won um, so I had that confidence that you know I, I, could, I could beat him in the final um, but yeah we, as I say we just knew each other so well that it, it made it a, um, a tough fight really yeah like that anytime it's happened for people in art like it's great that it happens but it's kind of but it's always this weird feeling as well you know like it's because as a team you, as a team you can't cheer for the person who's won because you have the person who's just lost it's it's just this weird dynamic that sometimes happens when you're against somebody from the same country oh yeah yeah and uh, uh, i struggle to to remember these fights but it, again, it was a bit of a strategic one, and it was just mainly sidekicks who, who sort of scored first, really. Um, but yeah, they they can always be a bit cagey. Yeah, it's kind of fun. no one wants to give risk it or or give too much away. Yeah, and especially like you said, you're not like. It, it can always be cagey in a final, anyway. But then you have the added thing of that you know each other so well, so that would have been. Cage- a match between the two of you probably would have been cagey anyway. But then you yeah, add in yeah. that, it, that it's a final of European Champions like that adds in the cage, you know, it makes it even more. It's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Amplifies it even more so, you know. But, um, yeah, it's good to win. <laughs> like, uh, I can finally give up, give, retire then. Yeah. Had that been on your had that been on your mind though? Had you had you thought like if I win this, I'm going to retire or? Yeah, yeah, because I already in my head I was I was stop, I was stopping after the world, and 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 I was yeah persuaded to come back and so I I said like okay but just this one and then I I think I'm done. <laughs> just also it. It takes its toll. Number of competing and squad squads, you know, three hours every, every Sunday traveling to the middle of the country. It, you know, it just takes its toll. Really, as much as I enjoyed it, and um, you kind of want to do other things, and yeah, but so you, it, it was right. Yeah, but but if you hadn't won, do you think you would have been persuaded to come back for another one after? Probably, you know, I'm easily persuaded as well, mate. So, um, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, there's one the, more, as they say. That's it, like, there's always one more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what, yeah. Kind of prompted, what kind of prompted the switch then to how did you end up in kind of fighting in Muay Thai then? Um, I sort of, I'd always sort of dabbled it in it across, over the years because I've got a good friend um, who, um, he runs a, a, a gym with his dad, a club with his dad, and so, and they they always sort of, well, he always tried to, he always encouraged me to go. So I sort of dabbled in a training session every, every other week, or you know when I when I could fit it in really, which is always difficult when you're doing taekwondo five or six times a, a week. But um, so yeah, so that that was kind of how I got into it, and and really enjoyed it, and then after. After the Wales in two thousand seven, in in two thousand eight, I um, 
I decided to go to Thailand for a couple of months just to, to train, train in Thai. And, was I, and, and, and at that point, I, I'd only done a few sessions, but I thought, I'll sort it, let's just um, get, you know, it's an opportunity to get away and, and try something new. And, um, and so I'd always sort of wanted to go back to it at some point. Yeah. What was Thailand like? What, did you enjoy that? Have you been back since? Yeah, yeah I love it. I've been, been over there like four, five, six times now. And um, yeah, every time you go, it's just a, it's a hard experience, but a good one at the same time. You, you come back so super fit. Um, yeah, it's, it's another level out there, definitely. It's just, it, just watching the kids do it, they're just, they're just nuts. They're just so good. They just live and breathe it as well. So, um, and you, you get put in a ring with one and they just, they, they throw you about, you know? Yeah. Did you, did, were you tempted to fight over there at all? I, I'd like to, that, that was kind of my ambition this year. Um, and always, well, it's taken me a long time to sort of, um, Oh, well, I wouldn't say I'm good at it, but I'm getting better at it, you know. But so it's taken me a long time to get to that point, and um, because I really had to change the style, the style between taekwondo and, and which I was so different. It, it's taken a long time to sort of um, to get used to Muay you know, and and so so yeah, I, my ambition was to to go this year and, and just have a fight over there. Um, but yeah, I don't think that's going to happen now, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, who knows? Who knows, maybe at the end of the year, but I think that might be a tough ask really. Uh, yeah. You need to be, you need to be like, have a good training camp over there and then go over and have a like couple of weeks training camp there and then be ready, ready to fight. Um, so yeah, but that that's my because I'm still I'm still like fighting C and B class here. So um, yeah, that's that was also my aim to have to fight this year in, in A class and um, feel like I'm 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 kind of ready for it now. I'm ready ready to get elbowed in the face anyway. Yeah, that's kind of that's was the big jump up, isn't it? And then the elbows to the face and stuff. Yeah, we 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 practice in it. And you put the the elbow pads on and 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 fight, but um, it's not quite the same, is it? To be honest, it's a nice bit of pad in there. Did you find much of a difference then changing from like the I suppose tatami to kind of ring to you've got ropes and you can't go anywhere? Yeah, yeah, because I, at first I was very sort of. Um, bouncy I suppose you'd say so I, I, I moved a lot and so yeah, I'm sure you've seen a lot of, a lot of fights so the guys are standing in the middle of the ring most of the time and, and there's not too much movement and so although sometimes that does come to my advantage at, sometimes if I want to move but I've got good movement but um, but yeah it, it, it's taken a long time to sort of drill drill out some things from taekwondo that, that don't work in in Muay Thai. Yeah. I suppose like obviously there's a good base, but once you start adding in once you can get leg kicked, I suppose that kind of kind of forces you to to change like even maybe your stance and that from the way you would have been in Taekwondo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I um, had to change everything really. <laughs> uh, is that it gives you a type one is give me such great base you can you've got such a big vocabulary of, of kicks you can throw in the um some some fight i might not expect it you know so it's always good to have yeah, yeah. what about yourself have you, have you tried it jamie at all you did you think of um i'd be tempted i'd love to i'd love to try it a couple of different things, I suppose, uh, at some point in time at the moment, I've been, um, 
just taekwondo, but maybe at some point I'll try maybe some Muay Thai or I'll try some, I don't know, even maybe Jiu-Jitsu or MMA. I'd, 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 I'd like to... I'd like to try something else, all right, um, just to experience it. Um, I think yeah. it'd be good, but at the moment, no, I haven't. Um, you see, it sounds like listening to your other podcast, you have good knowledge of all sort of martial arts. So. Yeah, I love to just, I love to just watch, um, I love to just watch fighting. Whether it's no matter what it is, like if it's boxing, Muay Thai, MMA, I just love to watch fighting. Just, I just love yeah. it. <laughs> Hard not to, isn't it? I'd, I'd rather watch that than than any other sport really. It just doesn't excite me the way the way fighting sports do really. It's yeah. Especially with the likes of one championship and um UFC. And there's so many things you can just watch now. It's just so more accessible than back in my day. Yeah, that's it like this. And especially like there it's kind of the I suppose more sports are coming back, but the last while it's been obviously the UFC has been back mostly, and then there's been some boxing that's came back. But like it's been it's been combat sports that have been kind of going throughout the whole coronavirus. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's you, you haven't had to like. It's been easy to find the time to watch them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. How long do you think you'll keep fighting with? Uh, how long do you think you'll keep fighting with Muay Thai? Yeah, I, um, just for as long as I as I feel I can keep going. Really, I still feel. Um, fit and in good shape and um, pretty injury free and um, so so yeah so I just, I just want to um, try and fight my ambitions are to fight a a class and to fight in Thailand and um, so I think once I've done that I, I kind of I like like to have a few fights mind you but. Um, yeah, they're my ambitions. So, yeah, yeah. I think once I've done that, I think uh, I'd, I'd be happy to to call it a day at some point. Especially when other things get in the way as well. Life gets in the way, doesn't it? And it's yeah. alright if you're a professional fighter or athlete, but yeah, just work gets in the way as well. So, <laughs> of course, it makes it harder. I'd also like to to one day open up my own own club, own, own gym, um, and teach sort of uh, Taekwondo, of course, and, and perhaps like K1 and, and Muay Thai. So that, that that would be the aim. Yeah. Is teaching something you would have done a lot of anyway? Like, would you have done much coaching throughout your time? Um, I've always, uh, I was involved um, in my first club a bit, and I used to take a few sessions and, um, and help out whenever, especially with the juniors. And I've always sort of been involved with any club I'm at, you know, trying to help. But um, but yeah, no, I've not done it on a proper, proper full-time basis kind of thing, you know. So yeah, I'm sure it's very different. <laughs> yeah, I suppose like when you, it's a different bargain when you're in charge of the younger kids and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Will you need to brush up on the patterns? Yeah, yeah. I said, to, I said to myself, um, I was going to practice them every day during the lockdown, and I, I've not done one one single pattern. So, not yeah, good. I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get to it eventually. It's just like I'll go for a run instead, or I'll go and hit the bag, or or, or whatever. Like the patterns can be tiring, but I think you feel like, like I said, run, running or hitting, okay. running or hitting the bag. Though I think you feel it can maybe sometimes give you give you that sense you've done a bit more, or you've put in some hard work as opposed to doing a couple of dang guns or a couple of gabex or a couple of whatever patterns, you know. Yeah, I will, I will do it. I will do it. I need to. I need to. It's a, it's a nice art form to do, and um, it's a big part of taekwondo, and. Um, so yeah, it still means means something to me, definitely. So yeah, I, I need to get back to it. Try and get back back up to uh, the uh, black belt patterns. Yeah. So we could see you at the European or World Championships as a coach. Go, go down the uh, line. Yeah, you know what? I'd love to. I'd love to actually. I'd love to because I feel like I've got a lot of experience to give back, and so I'd, I'd love to be in so involved in in some way. Or it just be, you know, on the sparring team, or um, 
don't know, just I'd like I would like to be involved at some point. Um I think that's that I need to if that's how I want to do, I need to, you know, make those take those steps to, to get in there. Um which I kind of understand it could you know, it's a long process, there's a lot of good coaches out there. But I'm sure yeah. that there's not many people that have that have my experience, you know. Yeah, definitely. So I feel like yeah, I yeah. Get it'd back. yeah, it'd be good to have somebody like like you said with your experience and like and you like your success as well, like to have that around around the team who would be good, I suppose, for Team England to have that around, especially juniors coming through yeah. and help help build the team. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. I think it's it's like any sport or any martial art. It's, it's how it keeps going and evolving. Is people give back to it, you know? And I think that's you know all part of the cycle. So um, so I yeah I, I I would love to do it. I think yeah. there'd be um, but it'd be quite fulfilling. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. Uh, I guess I Sorry. Are you coaching then, Jamie? Are you... Yeah, we're coaching, teaching classes in um, in Shannon in our club. Um, been doing that good for years, no. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing, teaching, coaching classes, talk coach kids mostly. But uh, yeah. And do you, do you do that full time? Yeah, pretty much. And wow. I'll, I'll probably look at opening my um, probably look to open my own club soon. Um. I'm going to go from there and see can we bring somebody from white belt to world champion. <laughs> that would be that would be the goal, I suppose. Uh, yeah. I think that's why kind of what you have to kind of aim for. Like obviously, it's it, you don't. And I think this is sometimes the challenge of with opening a club is everybody wants to go. I'll open a club and within six months or a year, I'll have people on the national team. But I suppose it's not really the way it works. You know, there's it's a long commitment to. To just get people to black belt, then to get them good enough to get onto a national team, to get them good enough to win medals at a, at a championships. It's it's the if you just look at a championships, you think, oh, I want to coach at one of these and coach a, a student at one of these. But there's a long process behind getting a person yeah. to them. Definitely, yeah, definitely. But um, very rewarding to see them from from white belt to to that level. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, definitely is rewarding. But if you're getting into, I think, going, oh, I want to be, I want to be sitting in the chair, but my student is on the floor, and the final of the world championships, it's well, like that's kind of the glamorous side of it. It's like there's a lot of other days when you know, when you're in, when you're in maybe a cold hall, and that student is only a green belt, and you're trying to progress them. That's you know, there's that side of it too that a lot of people. I saw if you look at the world championships, European championships, that people. You sometimes forget and I think um you have to be ready to make that commitment, I think, is the thing when you're opening a club and looking to to commit to having kids and being responsible for them progressing, you have to be ready for those times as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see, I see where you're coming from, definitely. And I, I, I kind of see it with myself and when I was competing and I'd have other coaches coaching me, but your own coach is also involved and put a lot of hard work into you know it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's really... do you find like did you find because like, I suppose you kind of jumped around I not jumped around but did you you kind of you didn't really have that kind of one coach that you started with to, to all the way through like so did, you, did you find it hard sometimes jumping around and then sometimes maybe you were training with obviously you know um, uh, Mr Anderson and then you know maybe Phil Lear is in the you know, Master Leo's in the chair. Did you find that was kind of hard sometimes to adjust or to work with different people? Or um, I was I was quite lucky because um, well, Phil Leo, I sort of um, he's such a good coach and he he's good with every competitor. He he, he understands them and um, tac- tactically he knows what's right for them. So. It, it 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 was it, yeah it's quite an easy transition for me to work with someone like that and um, I was always uh, lucky to have a good coach from the beginning with um, Andrew Delaney and then with Darren he he understood me again so and he knew what my um, 
my strengths were and, and, and weaknesses. So yeah, I, I didn't really, really struggle um, too much. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm probably quite as well, <laughs> I don't know, but quite a simple fighter. So, um, so yeah, so I, I know, but effective. I like to think of, <laughs> sorry, right? But effective, simple, but effective. It's, yeah, exactly. It's simple basics, what, what worked for me. And um, so, so yeah, I like to think I was, I was quite easy to work with. I yeah. hope so. Yeah, because personally, I found like that's for myself is a is a big benefit. The fact that like Adrian has been obviously my coach all the time, but then he's also been able to to coach me at these tournaments. So it's like I just have the consistency all the time. It's the same person, and um, wow. which is a right, uh, right. it's it's now it has been once or twice um, where I've had different coaches and I didn't fully perform there. Like I don't know, it was a it was probably more mental than anything. The fact that you know anything that was said on the chair but I think I am lucky in that respect uh, I train with the same I've trained with the same person all my time and I've had the same person pretty much coach me every time it's a, it, I, I do feel that that is a, a big help yeah yeah that's it yeah that's so good and, and uh, so was Adrian in, in your um, corner for the Welsh in, in Ireland yeah. yeah all the time it's only Benadorm he didn't coach me because we had a Louise was competing at the same time, so he ended up um, right. coaching her, which I suppose like I ended up with a different coach and I didn't really perform and I ended up losing first round. But then you can't get too upset because he was working with Louise and she won the world. So I was like, I suppose <laughs> that's got, that's those are the breaks. And I think my first one, uh, my first tournament in Sweden, he was like Adrian was. We only had one sparring coach, so he coached all the competitors, and um, there would be Master Cooley. I found like uh, a great coach in that, but just I just prefer Adrian because that's the person I work with all the time. But uh, they're the only two times really that uh, what you're up in the world that I haven't had Adrian coaching me. Um, but yeah, all the other times he, he's been there, which has been a help. Uh, it's a pretty good, good record. Yeah, but then I see some like like Adam Shelley. Then like has, has jumped around like he just trains with different people, but then like has never had his own, I suppose, instructor as a coach at a tournament, and has had different coaches like from different times and still wins. So like like that, I think it just depends, I suppose, on the person, doesn't it? Like you said, like you had a couple yeah. of different people. It just depends. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it does depend on the person completely, and and. Yeah, it's lucky to have that uh, relationship you have with, with Adrian. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, he just, he knows me. And I, I find sometimes even, just I don't know if you have this, like, like if you kind of have the same the same vocab, like you understand, like when he's talking about a certain thing, a certain situation, you kind of have that understanding because you're kind of working off the same hymn sheet, I suppose. Whereas I find sometimes that when you have a different coach, they might be saying what they say to you, you might take that, that might mean something different to you because you're not used to working with that person. But I think like once yeah, you have yeah. that work, if you can work that out and you, you kind of have that kind of understanding, then it, it should be good. But uh, yeah. 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 I see in the past that, you know, I've had, had a coach or two that have told you to, to do something that, that doesn't sort of, um, it doesn't work for you, you know, it doesn't, it, yeah. you know, when you're back in the corner in the break and he's telling you to do something, it's, it's hard for you to sort of compute that in your head and how you can do it. And so it's important you have someone that, that, that knows you as a fighter and, um, and your strengths definitely and what works for you and, and what works for you to win the fight. Yeah. Because like, even what they're telling you, it might be correct, but it might be correct for somebody yeah. else. It might be correct for somebody yeah. else. It's like it does. It's not yeah. going to work. For you. Like you said, it's not going to work for you. It's like it's not that they're telling you what they're telling you isn't. It could be correct. It could work. Just it's not going to work for you. I think kind of is the way yeah. it is yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Just understanding your your competitor really. Your... Yeah. yeah. I suppose just before we finish up, I uh, I tend to ask uh, everybody if you had to pick, if you had to pick a favorite fighter. Uh, across any sport, it could be taekwondo, it could be boxing, MMA, any any sport. If you had to pick a favorite fighter, who would you pick? Oh yeah, I was I was thinking about this one before because I've, I've heard you <laughs> ask it, and I was, like many people have said before, it's such a tough ask, isn't it? Because there's there's in if you're just looking at taekwondo, which you know is 
there's been so many good fighters during my sort of era as well. The likes of Neil Ernest was a, a big inspiration for me, and Tom Sparada, and such good fighters. Um, but then you've got so many different good Polish fighters from um, the Miłosz, who I fought in the in the Wells, my first round in the Wells in 2007, one of the best fighters I've, I've come up against for sure, just with his, his movement and and technical ability. Um, but then also the explosive fighters like Igor Maximenko, I don't know if you, yeah, you remember yeah. him, he was so good, like just great to watch, explosive, so exciting. Um, but, but I think uh, for me, because I, I trained with him day in, day out, I think um, my favourite would have to be, be Zach. I'm not just, obviously, all right, I'm a bit biased, but <laughs> every fight you watch with him, it's just just exciting. It's, you know, in my opinion, the, the best heavyweight that, that there's been. Um, and yeah, he's just so exciting and so good and relentless, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, I suppose yeah, that kind of yeah. sums up actually. That sums up his style, I think. Yeah, relentless, just constantly coming forward. Like I said, one yeah. of has has won won everything: world champion, European champion, European Cup, World Cup. So he won all the yeah. wonderful big ones. So you know you can't. Yeah, it's a bit unnoticed, in my opinion. You know, he just um, maybe that's just me. I'm, I hope that's not the case. But um, yeah. Might be a good one to actually. Uh, I must maybe try and make contact because I think he'd be good to have on the podcast as well. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah, great, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Zach, Zach, is, Zach is definitely a good pick for uh, your favorite fighter, and a one that has. Yeah, to say, say there's sorry just before that, just and there's been some exciting. You know, I left out some exciting female competitors there as a sort of um, kid growing up, sort of watching Julia Cross was um, someone to look up to, definitely. She, she was brilliant, just tough as well. Um, and then, of course, you've got um, the celebrities as well. So, she, Katia, so she, yeah, great fighter. But the list just goes on and on, doesn't it, Jamie? Is like so many Irish fighters, like Adam Shelley and Hong and... Um, yeah, it's league yourself and just hard to pick. It's hard to pick uh, one. Yeah, it's hard to pick one. And you're kind of picking what you have different people for different reasons, I suppose, different styles and, and that yeah, it's exactly. hard to pick. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But yeah, look, I think we'll leave it there. Um thanks a minute for coming on. I've uh, really appreciated it. Really enjoyed the chat, really enjoyed hearing your story. Thanks for having me on, really really appreciate it. I, I hope uh, I didn't bore you too much there, but uh no, no, that was good. Right. I've, enjoyed, I've enjoyed hearing your story, and then um, hopefully we get back to proper training. And uh, like, I, I think we're close to getting back to fully, and like, it's I suppose getting back to competition now might be the next thing that we can look forward to. Yeah, when, when do you think you'll be competing? Um, twenty twenty one. Exactly. Yeah. I think so. Is that from uh, from both physical and um, when they can actually do competitions? Or yeah, I think it's from both. I think. I'd love to say we'll get a, a, a one competition in by the end of the year, but I think I'd be very surprised. But uh, but hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, well, I'll, um, I'll be uh, I'll be watching. Best, best of yes. luck for the future, mate. And then, yeah, yeah, you too, yeah, man. All the best. All the best. Take care, mate. Bye.